since we're starting over, you have to read Cheers. You have to read Cheers. Yeah, because they didn't okay. see it because we're starting over. We deleted the first 20 seconds. That was a practice Cheers. Practice Cheers. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. This is how it starts, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. 20 uh -huh. years, man. 20 years. So I've been bugging her about doing this video for a little while because we had our anniversary back in uh, August. And I think it's worth talking about for the obvious reason, but more so too because people have left comments about how they like the the positive vibe of our family and you know they kind of like seeing those things and i think you got a little bit more on board with it when you saw all the comments people were leaving in the video when we took the boy on his first riding trip ever and just how supportive everyone was and just it was really neat in my opinion to see that but i've been experiencing that for like a year now mm -hmm. And what were your thoughts on all that? Just seeing that kind of crazy positivity on an online, on the internet, right? Well, I knew there could be positive stuff on the internet. Well, yeah, you watch cooking shows and gardening. <laughs> but that was really neat for people to become so invested in people they don't, who aren't neighbors. Yeah, sure. That's really neat. Um, that's really interesting and really, I appreciate it. I think, I assume, I obviously can't speak for everyone, but I, I assume too that those who have, you know, if they've joined Patreon or, or, or supported in any kind of way like that, I think there is some like feeling of positive investment when you see somebody do something like that rather than all these influencers, right? They're, oh, I bought, you know, a five thousand dollar jacket or i bought a new tesla like i mean we still bought a thing and so i don't want to like preach on that too much but at the same time it was for something that him and i can do together that i used to do with my dad mm -hmm. and it's just it's very positive lots of memories there for me obviously and now we can do that together and then all three of us going together and so i i, I feel like there's some buy-in there I've just and, yeah and anything that i've has i've been hesitant about I can talk. No. We've only had two toasts. Yeah. <laughs> and one practice toast before that. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that I don't want to flaunt anything. Yeah. I don't either. You know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I don't remember if it was this take or the last take when you were talking about my being hesitant about this. Anything that um, I share that's positive, I don't want to be bragging about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I cuz I appreciate it and I don't want it to ever come across as look what I have. Right. Look how I live or something like that because I really appreciate it and I don't take it for granted. And I think that's something that they appreciate too that we don't take it for granted. No, cuz it hasn't always been this way. Right. Right. It's been there's been a lot in 20 years, man. There's been a lot. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot. And before then, yeah, I am before then too. Yeah. Well, and I, yeah, yeah. Well, should we hit some of these questions? Otherwise, we're just going to, I don't know. Otherwise, we're just going to get mushy. Well, we're just going to talk, which is fine. But then what was the point of telling people to post questions? And you're not going to edit it, so. <laughs> no, I don't edit. No. Mm -mm. I just, we just go. And if we get too far down the line, then we're just in. We're committed. Yeah. And that's it. We <laughs> would just say whatever. <laughs> which we were. I, I had floated the idea of doing a live stream for this, but I really didn't want to do that because chat becomes pure chaos, right? And I didn't want people feeling like they needed to spam the questions and I'm terrible at trying to figure out how to set up moderation and all. And I was like, okay, no, 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 let's just you do it. You won't let me ban anybody. That's I could true. moderate like crazy, but he won't let me ban <laughs> That's true. anybody. I try. She's so excited. I try. I tried to ban the entire chat once and he wouldn't <laughs> let me do it. It's true. All right, let's hit up a question. Um, I tried sorting these. It's it's sorted by top comments through the YouTube filter, but it's weird how some of them have way more thumbs up than others. And so I assume there's some sort of like dislike percentage ratio that we can't see since YouTube got rid of the downvote visibility. Anyway, so of the new music, this is from JB. Of the new music you come across since starting the channel, are the songs are there songs you regularly play around the house which you both really love? Of course. Yes. Anything by Richie Russo. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. We do. We are both fans of Rishi Russo. Anything yeah. by Mac Miller. Mac Miller, for sure. Uh, anything by Kendrick. Yep, Kendrick, for sure. Doom is, for the most part, fine. Yep, yep. yep. Um, you like a lot of Kanye. I do like a pretty much Kanye. most of Kanye is fine. Yep. We just don't read anything about him. Yeah, we try not to. Mm-hmm. But Twitter just keeps dumping it in front of my face every single day. That's why I don't <laughs> yeah. have Twitter. Nope. Um, yeah. What yeah. else? Those have been big ones. Mm-hmm. Those have been big. If we're going to stick to just rap and hip hop. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I Kendrick, I think Kendrick for both of us has been the most impressive just because of what he has said in the way that he says it. Mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's been incredible. But and then but then I immediately think of Doom and how fun it is to listen to Doom. He's fun and playful. Yeah. And, yes. And then Mac Miller is just so enjoyable. Mm-hmm. The the production and the way Mac does his thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. yeah. There's been some great stuff. Mm-hmm. Great stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh this is from Kay. What are your favorite films? Congratulations on 20 years. Wish you nothing but love. What's So we do have a back and forth because you We don't have Together, favorite films. Um, Mm-mm. not really. No, I. We l- have ones that the other one tolerates. I love Young Frankenstein. Ugh. She loves Blazing Saddles mm-hmm. and Return to Me. Yeah, yeah. I mean that movie's fine. I, I'm, I'm okay with that movie. I've warmed up to that one. Um, <laughs> that smile. Did you see that smile? Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we both like Free Guy. Free Guy is great. The new Ghostbusters is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, the original Ghostbusters, you finally warmed up to. Yes. Because you're not scared of it anymore. I'm not scared of it anymore. I'm not watching E.T. That scares me. We've both enjoyed the Marvel movies yes. for the most part. We've yes. enjoyed those. Oh, we do have movies we like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, There's a couple. Look at us growing. <laughs> yeah. It only took 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we're we... not necessarily huge movie people. Not really. I'm more keen to watching a movie than a show. You'll watch some shows. Mm-hmm. I don't really watch shows that often. I just I'm not into it that much. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So next question is from Lar- Lar- Lartex. Does the success of this channel and the admiration of Mr. Pop Pop as an inter- entertainer surprise either of you, or did it sort of, or did this sort of thing always seem to be in the wheelhouse? Um, I have a pretty good wit, I would say. A good sense of humor. I can talk to people pretty easily. I'm comfortable doing this kind of thing and cracking jokes and what have you. So I think in that realm, it's it's been an easy transition for me. But it is surprising to see uh, the love. Right. I should say. As far as how far this channel has gone, I love you. <laughs> I answer. didn't think it would be this much. It's going to be a good answer. Um, yeah. But it's really, really neat. And it's one of those things where I was kind of ambivalent. And I'm glad to have been wrong. Um, not that I was like, oh, this will never do anything. It was just like, okay, sure, you want to do that. That's great. Um, so this has been really fun to watch. And fun to see happen. And you are good with people. And you are entertaining. And I'm not biased at all. No, of course not. It was strictly unbiased opinion. Strictly right? unbiased. Uh, I think I think uh, what has probably been the most surprising to you is my continued persist in just doing the consistency. It. Yeah, just doing it, doing yeah. it, doing it. Yeah, because that's not really my strong suit. Consistency is not really my strong suit. Usually, with consistency, that means I do something for like two months and then stop. That's about as consistent as I get with most things. Because I just kind of eh. All right, let's do something else. But that's been kind of a strength with this channel because some things haven't panned out. Sure. Some things haven't really worked, but you've decided you're going to stick with the channel. And so you said, eh, that's not really working. So you've gone, stayed with the channel, but gone into a different direction. Like this wasn't your first YouTube channel. Yeah, right. I used to do Diablo 3 videos and Mm -hmm. that was fun, but it all, I, I, I never, I never really, fully bought into it really honestly mm-hmm. it just didn't feel like something that made i don't know sense or whatever i mean it was fun but that was it and that's part of the reason why when you decided to switch to this i was like that's great <laughs> <Yeah>. wonderful <laughs> i'm happy for you 
yeah. fabulous. That's funny. And um, but this has been something that's been closer to you as much as you love Diablo. This has been more you, and I think that's why it's worked better. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. This is a really good question. This is from Dank Jugs. Great name. Fabulous I, name. I love some of the YouTube names. Bob, I'm a, I am young. And I'm about to be a father. I'm very stressed about it with my girlfriend. You and your wife seem to be, have a very healthy relationship with each other and your son. So I'd love to hear some dad advice on how to be a good husband and father. Love your videos. I wish my own dad could be as open-minded as you do. Or yeah. Let's see if you get this one right. Oh, did you write an answer to this one? She I went through before and, and took notes because this just helps her. Otherwise, she gets like I, the, the brain lock and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> He's laughing because he knows. Yeah. No, yeah. I process slowly. I will think of good answers tomorrow. So I would, I would say this, Dank. Understand this, that when it was time for me to be a father, honestly, to begin with, I had a hard time with it too because it is very challenging. It's very difficult. It's very time-consuming. And for me personally, when kids are very, very young, like little babies, little blobs that the you love, blobs. Mm -hmm. she loves the blobs, mm -hmm. great, take care of the blobs, not really my thing. And then when they get into like two and three, they can be very challenging, very challenging. So I, I say all that to say that I want you to understand I struggled a lot a lot in those early years, okay? And I, I've talked to other people who have felt the same way and it's very important to understand that you are not, you're not an evil, terrible person if you feel like you're struggling. That's normal. And that might sound weird because usually people don't say that, but it's normal. It is hard, it's challenging, but it's also fantastic. So just know that the hard times are, are temporary, but you know, so are the good times. That's what's kind of weird. And so mm -hmm. you gotta embrace it as much as you can and just, Try and be there as, as well as you can. There's going to be times when you're terrible at it. There's going to be times when you're good at it. It's, it's kind of like everything else mm -hmm. in life. And then as soon as you get good at it, it'll change. Yep. That's and exactly. then you'll go back to being not good at it. Yep. About every two weeks, you'll have this cycle. The thing that I appreciated about you is that you were concerned about the blob form. So one thing that he did do is he did something. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> he did something that he knew he could do, which is he picked out a, oh, a what? A song? <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah for the hospital. Yeah. So he wasn't sure because he's an only child. Yeah. Well, he has a stepbrother, but he came later, yeah. much later, and um, so he wasn't quite sure what to do with the the little form. Um, so he did what he could do and that was music. Yeah. Yeah. And there's certain things, you know, you're making me cry now too. So this whole video is just going to be us crying basically at this point, but that's okay. That's fine. Um, that's the real reason you don't watch return to me with, huh? with me. I cry all the time at the movies. I cry for the damn Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> I cry when Tony Stark dies. I cry all the time, all the time. <laughs> I don't even know what we're talking about now. We're talking about having kids when they're little and being um, concerned and afraid and not ready. Sure. You know, here's another thing too. This was something that struck me immediately was it feels oddly normal. And I know that in its own sense doesn't make any sense, but I remember coming home and here's the baby and all this other stuff and it felt weird, but at the same time it felt normal. It did not feel like, Oh my God, what do I do? Oh my. It was just like, okay, now, now we're doing this. Mm -hmm. There was about two minutes after we left the hospital when I thought, they're going to run out and stop us. <laughs> yeah, right. You did the right. course. <laughs> Why are they letting us leave? <laughs> like, oh, there's all man. this stuff. You have to do all this training. And then when you have a kid, they say, okay, you've been here 24 hours. Everybody's healthy. Bye. Yeah. And you go... Okay. And, and Dank, one more thing, man, I want to say, the fact that you're even thinking about it and that you're concerned is a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So read all the books and ask I, I all the questions. I didn't read any books. No. Some <laughs> things will apply and other things won't. So yeah. whatever. Just, and just be patient with yourself, man. Give yourself time to grow and, and learn. Your and your girlfriend and the kid. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
All right. And then get the cute little socks. <laughs> yeah. Get the cute little socks and keep them forever because your wife will never let them get rid of them. I only ever. kept one. <laughs> all right. Let's move on. M8D. First of all, congrats to both. Now to my question. What's the weirdest album I have ever shown to you? Gex. Oh, yeah. A Gex. thousand Gex. Really? I'm surprised. I'm surprised not uh, JPEG Mafia. He's become a little bit normal in our house. Yeah. Oh, he's great. Yeah. He's great. he's great. There was one other guy who was very interpretive. I don't think I played any Death Grips for you. I've maybe played a little bit of Death there Grips. There was one guy who was more of a, a sound than a music, and I don't remember who that was. But I do remember 1,000 Gex. Yeah, and that was fun. That, that was entertaining. That was a fun video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we asked our son, you know, does he have any favorite songs that he's heard so far? Uh, his answer to that was All Caps by MF Doom. Oh, that's an actual song. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's rough sometimes, marriage. You have to make compromises and forgive and, and stuff like that. And have patience. And have patience. Yeah, yeah. So he really likes All Caps. He enjoys Mad Villainy in general. He had a phase where he was listening, to, <laughs> of all things, to Black Skinhead for like a week straight because he loved the drums. That is one thing that we do really agree on and love in this house. Drums. Is the drums. Bang on those drums, man. Mm -hmm. We're all into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't have a question. Oh, this is from Blood. But congratulations from the times you've spoken on your regular life. You seem like a great person, spouse, parent. Wish we could see more people with similar ability to approach things in life. I appreciate it, blood. Thank you. Thank you. This is from o Ola Alua Olua. If you had to pick one artist to listen to the rest of your life, oof, one artist for the rest of my life. Are we sticking with rap and hip hop, or are we going with one artist? artist? One artist. I don't know. How long is our life? I don't know. I mean, the first default answers that pop into my mind are Tool or Queens of the Stone Age. And I'd probably maybe go towards Queens, Queens of the Stone Age just because a little bit more variety in the sound, maybe. I don't know. That's a hard one. Let's keep going. We'll, we'll sit here for 20 minutes thinking about yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, we won't talk. We'll just think right. about er. it. <laughs> this is from Luke. What are some tips for having healthy discussions, disagreements, any communication methods you found effective? Um... One thing that completely aggravates me but works really well is having serious discussions in the car. I was just going to say that. On a long car ride. Because you can't get out. <laughs> you can't avoid it. Yeah, and you just have to. And you want, I've wanted, I won't put this on you. Okay. okay. I have wanted to get up and walk away, and I can't because we're going an excessive amount of speed on the freeway. An appropriate amount of speed. <laughs> and and so we have to hash it out. And we're on the road long enough that by the end, even if we aren't, you know, totally happy with life, usually, <laughs> actually, we aren't. By the time we yeah, get to where we're going, usually we're pretty fed up with it. We aren't happy yeah, with life. Yeah. But we've talked it through. And so everything has gotten out and then we're just to the handle it stage yeah i would say know your audience you know know the person that you're with and how they respond to certain things one thing that i love mm -hmm. about you so much is i know if i'm gonna come and tell her something big significant you do it in the car. No, 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 no. You need like two to three days mm -hmm. to take that in, process, process, process. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to hit her with something that I know is heavy, big deal stuff, you know, approach it obviously with respect and care and all that stuff. And then I go, okay. And I just let her be how she needs to be. And then eventually a couple of days later, we approach it again and, and she's got her thoughts sorted out. And then we talk about it. One thing that I appreciate that you've changed when we've come to these discussions is instead of saying why do you do this you because that has put me immediately on the mm. defense sure you've started rewording it to um it's you what is it that you say 
how do you feel about blah, mm. blah, blah, yeah. or whatever. So you have begun approaching it as a you're learning and trying to figure out rather than a accusatory why. Yeah. And one thing that I've learned that you taught me is um, I like to bounce ideas off him. And it took me years to find out that my telepathy wasn't working. <laughs> and it's still, still not working. Still it's not, not working. <laughs> and so but I keep trying. So instead of... I wouldn't know. <laughs> right. Instead of asking him about whatever and then disregarding what he said because I just want to know what he thinks, I preface it. And I verbalize what I'm actually asking. Surprise, surprise. And I ask him, what is your opinion on whatever? So then he doesn't get upset when I don't get the, I don't know, gray shoes instead of the black shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or whatever. So he is the talker, obviously. He's the one that is good at emotions and, and bringing things out. And I am not. And so... He's taught me to talk more. Talk better? Goodlier. Goodlier. More goodlier. More goodlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, there was something else I was going to say, and I forgot because you were talking for too long. More, That's your fault. You were talking so goodlier. I was talking so <laughs> That's your fault. Um, okay, well, let's just keep going. I think that's a pretty good answer there. Uh, let's see. We're going to go to this guy. Wave says, if you could go back in time and say something to me just before he started the channel, what would you tell me? Get a better camera. Yes, I agree. Man, I'm really liking this newer camera. Holy shit balls. That's a nice camera. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, there's, it's weird how there's no votes on some of these, but they're higher than others with a bunch of votes. Let's ask, let's see what Stinky Fat has to say. Congratulations on 20 years. Both of your love for music reminds me of the relationship I have with my girlfriend. And I know how good it feels to share interests, something with other. Makes me happy to see other people happy. But on another note, here's another day of regrets <laughs> to listen to Peaceful. Oh, so it was a fucking album request. Fell for that trap, didn't you? did. I? And I had read it, so I knew you were going to. Oh, play. you knew. Sneaky, sneaky. All right, we're going to go to King Glizzard. Congrats on 20. Are there any modern artists or records outside of rap hip hop you've recently found that have made it into your top faves? Hmm. Is Chevelle considered modern? They are, but we've known them for so long. Um, modern artists. You know, I've recently really, really fell in love, fell in love, falling in love with Amy Winehouse. She's not super modern, and I used to listen to her Kind of a bit back in the day, but more, a lot more lately, a lot more. Uh, you haven't really found anybody new. Oh, Cannons, Cannons, really like Cannons. I just discovered them like a week or two ago. Great, great little band. You, you would, if I played the song, you'd go, oh yeah, them, yeah, sure, yeah, cool. Uh, okay, we're gonna skip the ones that don't have a lot of votes, unfortunately. Here's the Wamp. What would be the best approach to bettering yourself within a relationship? For example, when we discuss something and decide on doing something different, what habits do you employ to actually make sure those agreed changes get done? Um, you know, one thing that I'm very picky about is when someone says, hey, can you help with this or that? And I go, yeah. And then I start to do it. And then they go, you're doing it wrong. And then I go, you do it. <laughs> if you want me to do something, I'm happy to help. But if I'm going to start doing it and then you're going to come along and that's anybody, it's not just her, anybody. And, oh, you're supposed to do it like this, that, and the other. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, and that's something that I had to learn because when I started working, I had to let go of some things just yeah, because. Yeah. And I am like to do things myself. So, Which is something I love about her. So one thing that's super great about her, she's not your stereotypical cliche wife that nags and nags and you need to do this no. and you need to do that. She does all the projects. She changed out the light fixtures in the bathroom. She fixed the light thing up here. She, like, I think the only thing I've actually done here is fix the front door lock 
when that if was, I can't reach it with a ladder yeah sure we'll she does pick it up all kinds of projects because one she's a lot more concerned about some of those things than I am and so like for the most part if it's working the way it needs to work I'm fine with it and then you're you're totally fine with just like doing I'll just stuff. do it just do it get it's out great. of my way and I'll do it yeah but when he takes over the dishes mm-hmm Whatever. If yeah. you want to put the dishes in the dishwasher in a non in the right efficient way. manner <laughs> so they don't all fit. Oh man. No and fine. And here's what's right, so because that means that I don't have to. Here's what's so and important. That's, that's fine. Like there is by definition probably the best way to load dishes into the dishwasher or do laundry or do whatever. Right, my way. Who Oh, that was the wrong thing to say because I was gonna say who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's getting done, right? right? Like that's what matters. And as long as the other person is helping out, who cares if they didn't do it exactly the way you would have done? Like it doesn't matter. Let the people help you out. Help each other out. Basically, I think we've learned to be good roommates. Yeah, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah. And, and just one thing I've been doing like really recently is trying to just... Instead of ignoring the st stupid, tiny little things that don't matter, just do it. It literally takes eight seconds to pick up that little piece of paper that's on the floor. Just pick it up, put it in the trash. Mm -hmm. And even those little things matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's move on here. Pivot Shorts asks, what is the wife's favorite song album thus far that I've reacted to? Did you write an answer to that one? No. Because I figured you would know that better than I. You were really in love with Gold Digger for a long time. I was. <laughs> that was entertaining. Yeah. yeah. That's just good old fashioned fun right there. Yes. <laughs> Gold Digger, you were big into. Mm -hmm. uh, Mac Miller, you really fell in love with. You like Runaway quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as albums, though, I mean, you were enjoying Mad Villainy. You said you weren't really into mm, food that much. You no, because it wasn't about food. Well, right. It's just a clever phrasing for what he's actually talking about. I know. About. I was all excited. Yeah. Yeah. And it was smarter than what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> you know, and this feeds into what Cardboard's asking. What song or album artist I was most surprised that you liked? And I was honestly surprised you loved Gold Digger as much as you did. I was like, oh, okay. I like the songs that have a story. Oh, okay. It's it's a and funny it's song. It's such a good. It's, it's very entertaining. It's such a good story. <laughs> oh, it's great. Okay, let's scroll down. We're skipping a lot of stuff, unfortunately. Well, hey, let's see. When you first got married, this was from Loverboy Clement. Mm -hmm. When you first got married, what did you expect your marriage to be twenty years in the future, and how does it compare to what it's like now? Hmm. I have no idea. I wasn't really thinking about that. I figured we'd have. A kid, and that's as far as I got. Yeah, and it's tough because when we got married, I was in the military, and it's really hard to envision normal life when you're in the military mm -hmm. and going on deployments and gone for six, seven months at a time. And it, yeah, I don't know. I, I will say that I'm extremely happy with where we are now, 20 years later. Mm -hmm. It's honestly, I don't, I can't say that I had any real expectations back then, but. I feel like we've exceeded whatever expectations I might have had. You're, you're probably like, no, this is where we're supposed to be, huh? <laughs> I have lower expectations than she does. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. That's another favorite that you have that we kind of answered. This is the death mech. In a world so chaotic, how do you nurture your children to set them up for success? I want to have kids someday, but I worry about all the bad things in the world impacting them. They are going to impact them. They are going to impact them. That's how it is. I will say this, Death Mac. When my son was born, my grandfather was still alive, and he was raised in German-occupied Holland. He was a kid when the Nazis were just controlling Europe. And we were talking about life, and this was back in, you know, early, well, well, it was back about 10 years ago or so. And, you know, we were kind of talking about that. Like, yeah, there's all this going on and this, and that, and blah, blah, blah. And he said, yeah, but I wonder what my mom used to think. Mm -hmm. So it's just, yeah, you don't know, man. You, you don't know. And the world is crazy. And 
Sometimes it, th- it seems like it's just all going to hell, and sometimes it is. And then it just keeps going. What I think is good and really important is um, to answer the questions. Uh-huh. Yes. Because you want them to know your answers above anybody else's. And so whether it's a question like, why is it so sunny? And then you can rattle off which way the hemisphere is facing and it's blah, 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 you know? Or whether, regardless of what the question is, big or small, answer it. Yeah. If there's five in a row, answer them. Because maybe they want to know the answer. Maybe they just want some attention and some reassurance that they're loved. Maybe... Who knows? But who cares? Answer well, the question. And it builds trust. Mm-hmm. Like if you answer their question, if you just blow them off or give them a half ass answer or don't really you know, acknowledge it, then they start to learn, I can't come to this person for an answer to my question. Mm-hmm. So answer the question. Then they know I can ask this person. This person will give me information. This person will help me understand. Even if it's something that's awful. Even if it doesn't really resolve whatever the the problem might be, just answer the question. Because then they know, at least I can come to you for some sort of guidance right. or something. And nurturing that curiosity flows into the other aspects. If the curiosity is encouraged, then in academics or whatever avenue they're going through in life, it's an automatic find something else rather than I have a question, oh, wait, stop. Yeah, right, yeah. And so with that curiosity comes more knowledge and more success, theoretically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think that curiosity is important to nourish. Did you want to answer the question about the silliest jokes? Did you write anything down for that? No. No, okay. Sorry, but sorry, Grus and Strauss. No, because I for did you. a silliest <laughs> joke and then he deleted it. That was okay. No, this is not true. Not true. She's telling stories again, and she likes to do. Speaking of telling stories, we'll answer Super's question. How? Oh, actually, this person already knows that we know we met each other early. How did meeting your wife so early on in your life affect you? I know it's very rare to find your wife in middle school. I wonder who that is. Super. I wonder who that is. Oh, I'm sure we've talked about it at some point. Probably. So we met in the seventh grade. I sat behind her in homeroom. I still remember the first in thing English. I English. I still remember the first thing I said to you. What was it? I used to draw these big pictures of I was a huge fan of the game Rampage, where you're the big monsters and you smash the cities. And I used to draw monsters attacking cities. So, you know, big old towers and the monsters there and tanks and helicopters and when i was drawing i would make all the sound effects for the missiles and the explosions and all this because yeah it was so cute (laughs) and one day you turned around i don't think we'd ever spoken before and you asked me do you always have to make the sound effects when you're doing your drawings and i said yeah (laughs) and that was the the best (laughs) seventh grade <laughs> interaction yeah, ever. That was it. That was how it all began. Right there. And I was smitten. Yeah. Just wooed right out of your chair, huh? Yeah. I would say, you know, to the question, meeting each other so early, a huge benefit to that is, and you know, I, I, I don't know how big of a deal this is for other people, but knowing each other's past and each other's history each other's family that's a huge huge for me knowing her family and like kind of growing up kind of as a part of her family because i was around a lot you know what you're getting into you know where the other person is coming from you know what kind of relationship they have with their parents all i mean that is just huge huge Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm One thing that's been interesting, um, as uh, my other siblings have gotten married at different ages, a couple of us have gotten married young, and a couple of us found our spouses a little bit later in life. And so it's been interesting because those of us who got married young, we still had a lot of changing to go through. And there were a lot of growing pains because when you're in your 20s, your brain doesn't fully develop until you're 25. 
I love saying that. And we've already killed half of it with alcohol by then. Yeah. <laughs> or in the attempts. And so... <laughs> it sounds neat when you say it like that. Can you pass me the bottle? Yeah. Thank you. So both of us did a lot of changing. We are very... I shouldn't say very. We are different people, and I think that's actually a good thing. We are different people than who we married. Yeah. You and know. so those in my family who married later, they kind of married who they married and certainly everybody changes as it involves but they kind of it was a little bit more this is who you're getting and that's kind of not what yeah happened with us well like for example we were both christian when we met and and raised that way and went to bibles whatever not bible study but like youth group stuff Mm -hmm. together Mm -hmm. and after we got married we got baptized together and Mm -hmm. all this other stuff and then what eight nine years into it i was like hey uh <clears throat> by the way i'm not a christian anymore that was a long car ride that was a big deal about. i mean that was a big big deal and i rem- i still remember as i was struggling with that early before i had even told you thinking to myself i mean this could this could end it right i didn't know how you were going right. to react to that and i knew you know it would be a big deal but i was like "Fuck, man and then I thought, oh, well, okay, what do I do? Do I just not tell her? Do I just pretend? And I was like, I, that feels worse than just telling you. That feels worse than maybe the marriage ending. Like, no, this, because I knew how important it mm-hmm. was to you. So to not tell you was even worse mm-hmm. than telling you. And that was an example of understanding her and needing to process and just, I mean, you were with that for like a week or so before we finally kind of, before we Talked come back it. to it. Yeah. yeah. The thing that I appreciated with that was that you trusted me enough to go, this is not all encompassing. You're more than this. I mean, that's a large aspect. Yeah. Um, well, I remember you saying that to me. Right. You came back to me with that and said, hey, like, obviously, this is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, what question were we on? So uh, we were in the middle of a super serious one, and then Walmart just dropped off the groceries our neighbor ordered again, <laughs> again. Yeah. And I ran out there, uh, hollering and yelling and clapping my hands, and the guy just fucking drove off. <laughs> oh wow, wow. Uh, what question was it? Oh, how did we manage while we were deployed? Yeah. We didn't manage, man. Honestly, it just sucked. Mm-hmm. I got a dog. Yeah. Yeah, you went back to your parents. You stayed with your parents for a while. Remember that, right? Mm-hmm. On for the, a few months. Yeah. Um, and... It just sucked, man. There was really... I was... Go- mm-hmm. We weren't married for the first deployment, but obviously we were, you know, with each other and engaged and all that stuff. Um, and you were still in college. Right. So really... With the exception of junior high and part of high school, the entire relationship was long distance. Yeah, kind of. We didn't yeah. actually go on a date until we got married. Kind of, yeah. Because I was a poor ass. I didn't have any money at all. Like, she drove. <laughs> yeah. But that's because you wouldn't get your driver's license. Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't need to because my dad would just take me there. <laughs> I was not an inspired youth. Not at all. I was very happily labeled part of Generation X, which was the apathetic generation that didn't care about anything. Yeah, that's about right. You cared about a little bit, though, because I told you I wouldn't marry you unless you got a job. Yeah. We had that sweet, sweet ass, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told her I told her we wouldn't get anything crazy because we'd probably figure all oh, the families would be watching. But, so that would be my one naughty thing, I say. Okay? No more after that, I promise. Maybe. Probably. <laughs> Probably no more after that. Uh, I wonder if we've already gone through most of the like the voted questions. I don't know. Doesn't really seem like do we like do you like Travis Scott? You don't even know who that is. I oh, think... I know. He was on Fortnite. <laughs> you saying that is perfect giving everything that happened with the Astral World reaction and how I accidentally did the censored version. And everyone started calling it the. You fort- did the sort censored version of Astro World. I don't know which one that is. That's his album. Oh, 
<laughs> so everyone calls it the Fortnite version because that's basically <laughs> what it was. That was the first big event that we watched on Fortnite. Yeah, with yeah. our son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is the album? What is the album in which your dis- opinions differ the most? That's interesting. So what's one that you love that I don't like, and what's one that I love that you don't like? There, it's it's hard to come by an album you don't like. I mean, we have to go to like Chopin or Bach or something like that. And it's not even Somebody that I don't, I don't I like, like them. Yeah. I just don't listen to them very often, right. and I probably should. I I would probably enjoy them if I did listen to them more. They don't have any lyrics. I like lyrics a lot. You do. You'd have to. Man. What you'd have to do is listen to. Listen to them and then focus on one of the instruments and treat that instrument yeah. like the lyrics. I would say I'm probably way more into Rush than you are. Like, you think Rush is fine, fine. but you're not a huge... I really enjoy Rush. You have recently kind of discovered you're a massive Led Zeppelin fan. Mm-hmm. Like you really like Zeppelin. And I enjoy Zeppelin, but I've never been a huge, massive Zeppelin fan. Mm-hmm. Which is strange, given the music that they play. I mean, I think they've got some great songs, of course, but... You like Metallica, and I can't stand them. You don't like Metallica. I enjoy Metallica. I don't listen to them very often. We both love Tool. Both love Nine Inch Nails. Mm -hmm. Queens of the Stone Age. Mm -hmm. Doom. We even both enjoy Kanye quite a bit. Um, I just don't like saying his name anymore, (laughs) honestly, at this point, with everything that's going on. You can call him Yee. (laughs) No. Thank you for saying ye. Thank you. Is it supposed to be something different? It's yay. Kanye. 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 Yay. Oh. Yeah. I know. I did the same thing. I'm just happy I can make fun of you after everyone made fun of me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well. Oh, man. Do you know any rap songs by heart? No. Like the chorus? But What about the chorus? I do know some country songs by heart. Oh, here we go. (laughs) Here we go. I don't care for country, but... In high school, there was a year where that's all my siblings and I listened to. And so sometimes we'll go to a wedding and they'll put one on. And I confuse myself because I actually know all the lyrics. And I don't know lyrics to songs at all. (laughs) Confuse yourself. (laughs) They just come out of my head. Yeah, isn't it amazing how they'll be buried away in there? Yes. Yeah. But it doesn't happen for... What's a big co- What's else? a big country song you like? I don't know what you they know are. The name. That's what's great. She has no idea. She doesn't know the name, doesn't know the artist, know. doesn't know the album, nothing. And she'll come up to me, what's that one song? I, oh, God, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I have to sit here for five minutes and try and, like, solve the puzzle of that one song. The problem is that you get it right. I do. You figure it out. Yeah, I And do it too. doesn't take all that long. That's why I ask. It's faster than going on Google and, and going, Google. What's that one where it's like, no, 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 What's that one song? <laughs> Google, what's that one song? I don't know what the fuck you're asking. <laughs> a lot of these questions are pretty similar. Let's scroll up. Did we miss anything from like a lot of the highly voted stuff? I feel like this was shorter than I thought it would be. Uh, oh, here we go. This is a pretty good question from Austin. Regarding your marriage, what would you say are the best and most beautiful aspects of it to each of you? And since it's on the same coin, what are some of the worst aspects of a long-running relationship and what people don't usually openly talk about? Huh. I would say uh, this isn't like a worst aspect, but I would say it is very easy to fall into the day-to-day take advantage of things that we have in terms of how we you know we spend time with each other we interact with each other and we do it well and take that for granted and not you know really have this idea understanding of what other people are dealing with who are lonely who wish they could spend time with people who Mm -hmm. don't have someone close in their life and so it is i mean that's a positive that can be taken for granted. And so in that sense, the taking it for granted is a negative because it's just so easy to do. We're both working, you know, Mm -hmm. we're busy, we're doing this, we're doing that. We we go somewhere and it's just, you get so caught up in it and it almost starts to become routine, you know, in a way. And sometimes you're like, man, I'm kind of like in a funk or whatever, but I don't know. That's not a very well said answer. 
to the question. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you? To just get bored. Is that what you're kind of saying? Kind of, that can be the downside yeah. is being together for a long time is just kind of get bored. And it, In a sense. And assuming that everything's the same when it's not. Yeah. He might wake up one day and all of a sudden he doesn't like bananas. I would never do that to you, ever. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I think that is both, I think if I'm getting what you're saying, yeah. right? That's both the the benefit and kind of the curse. You have someone whom you're really comfortable with, but you have to let them change too. Um, yeah. And that can be really yeah. fun. And that's the one of the best things that my mom told me before we got married, maybe because we got married so young. I don't know. I don't know if she told it to my other siblings or not. We were both, but, we weren't, n neither of us were 22 when we got married. We were both still 20. I was almost 22. You were almost 22. But mm -hmm. we were both technically 21 when we got married. So mm -hmm. very young. And she told me to allow you to change. Yeah. Yeah, and it's absolutely true mm -hmm. because people change. And honestly, for those of you who might worry about that, people had better change. Yes. If you're locked into who you are at 21, mm -mm. that's to me, that's a problem because there's so much in the world to learn from and explore and challenge your own point of views and all that. If you're just locked in already, oh man, that's tough. Mm -hmm. That's really tough. Mm hmm and sometimes that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so the consistency is nice. Um, it is nice. It is really nice. But it's easy to take for granted. It is, yeah. So I, I would say to, to push back against that, do what you can to go, man, this is really nice. And, and do it during like the mundane times where it's like we're unloading the dishwasher and it's right. like, it's just, it's us. To appreciate and be thankful for those little things. Like um, if you take out the trash, that's so nice. Yeah, I mean, and just. And to say thank you, but to, to let things, yeah. Yeah, and just enjoy it. It goes fast. Mm-hmm. I was fast. thinking of something, but it doesn't really apply. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of this is about music. I wonder why. It doesn't make any sense. Why do people keep asking music questions? <laughs> you can um, answer those. How did I propose? Oh. This is probably almost your favorite story. It's the worst story ever. I, so before you say anything, I'll, I'll, I'm going to let you tell the story. But Beyonce you had the best album the of all story. time. Beyonce had the best album of all time. Before, before she tells the story, I will say this. I do not have a romantic bone in my body no. at all. Anyway. Mm -mm. Okay, go ahead. Relive the horror. <laughs> oh, so God. he used to live in the middle of an orchard mm -hmm. in, um, when he was shorter. And um, so we went out and we were walking mm -hmm. through the orchard and this is right before I was about to deploy. He was going to deploy, leave the next morning he was going out. Yeah. And, and she's still in college. <laughs> and it's beautiful and because whatever. Yeah, it's the afternoon. The sun was going no, down. No, the sun was going down. It was sunset. Yeah. Yeah. And we're walking along and I don't remember what crap he was talking about. And he takes out this box and he goes, oh, look what I have. You know, I know what that is. I know what that little size box is and what's in it. And he goes, oh, do you want it? <laughs> Not, will you marry me? No, no getting no. down on one knee. No. Nothing. This jerk, uh -huh. who's a, literally a foot taller than I am, holds it so that I can't reach it and says, do you want it? I just wanted to see how committed you were to the decision, you know? You... <laughs> so then when I finally do reach it and get it because I can jump. Yeah. Well, actually I didn't really jump. I more like climbed yeah. up and grabbed it. And then Which I enjoyed. That was nice. And then he's like, "You know what? <laughs> we should just wait on this because I'm leaving tomorrow." 
let's just do this later. Let's just not. No, no. And he's like, closes it up. He's like, no, no, we're not going to even do this now. We're going to do this later. There are not enough curse words in the dictionary. Oh, man. I think. Just. I, I'm trying to remember, you know, why did I do that? Because you're a jerk. <laughs> That's why you did it. Is it that simple, though? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Actually, why did you do it? Well, I knew I, you just said, yeah, and I was thinking, you know, I did just post today a video about talking about how I'm not going to tell people what I'm listening to in November. Just, See? Just to <laughs> just There to are turn, things about him that has turn changed. Turn that knife a little bit. But there's not. I think... A big part of me was struggling with leaving. A big part of me was like, I don't remember right now because it's well over 20 years ago now at this mm -hmm. point. I was probably very concerned about the relationship just failing and that was it and I didn't want to lose you. Uh, I knew that for sure. And so I just didn't know how to approach that. And what if you said, well, let's wait. How would I have felt, you know, how would I deal with my first deployment? Like there was just so many things that I was. So when you said, do you want this? Mm -hmm. That was like a legit question. I don't know. I was probably. I mean, that seems more appropriate. Like if than... I was in court, I would say I was not of sane mind at this point, you know, <laughs> because. But that's a more legitimate question than do you want to marry? Do you, do you want this? Maybe. That seems wildly intentional. I know, but from a <laughs> from, I don't I don't think I was that years later out. philosophical. Sure. Oh, how sweet. Right. No, but that's kind of interesting that it came out that way. Now that I think about it, and I've never thought about it that way before. This is just yeah, something. and I don't remember saying that. You did. You remember saying that. I don't question it. Mm. I don't question it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you're recounting the story correctly. Mm -hmm. Um. That was hard. That was a really hard time in my life because at that point you'd been in college for a couple of years and I was at home still going to community college with mm -hmm. no direction, no goal, no plan, no fucking idea. Mm -hmm. And then joining the Navy what made sense. You know, I, I got into the nuclear propulsion program and so it's like, sweet, when I get out, I can work at a power plant. Like, okay, okay, cool. I'm on a path. But now it's like, fuck, you're in college. I'm just going to be gone. Like the relationship was already difficult enough to begin with because you were gone away and I was at home and I'm, I mean, I had fears of some other guy sweeping you off your feet and all this other stuff because, you know, why not? Why would that not happen? And so that I think probably was really what was weighing on me the most. Just I'm literally leaving tomorrow and it's all just at this point in time, it's all up in the air. I have no idea what's going to happen after this. Huh. You looking at my shiny head over there? No, I'm looking at your little whisker that's coming out of your cheek right there. I do. Hmm. I'm listening. No, it's okay. I just was curious what you're looking at. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Yeah. I did not enjoy the military. Yeah, that was tough. And it wasn't tough from like a physical point of view. It was just fucking emotionally draining and stressful and frustrating. Ugh. And lack of sleep and far from home and no friends and no family and no food and no, I mean, just nothing. We had food. We lived off Reese's Pieces. Not when I, no, when I was on the ship. Oh, ocean. when you were on the ship. Oh, yeah. yeah. Remember when I came yeah. home and I was like 174 pounds or some mm -hmm. shit? I mean, mm -hmm. I weigh 230 right now. I was almost 50 pounds lighter back then. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was tough. Mm -hmm. That was tough. San Diego was fun, though. When I was home... I had mm -hmm. my the first captain to my carrier. He firmly believed that if you're stationed in San Diego, you take advantage of it. So our working hours, Monday through Friday, were 6 to noon. We went to the beach all mm -hmm. the time. And at the time, I don't know if they still do it, but um, was it Cold Stones? Yeah. Had oh, this yeah. discount. Yeah, for we had, active military. We did not have much money. No. We, were, we <laughs> were good about budgeting, and which meant that we hardly had anything for extra money at all, but yeah. we did make sure that we budgeted in going to Cold Stones like once a month on I think, Thursdays. They had a military discount. And we would buy one and split it. We would buy one and split it because that's all 
that's what we could afford. And then... Oh, my God, man. Yeah. It used to be a treat. On Sunday after church, we would go to Taco Bell. That was a treat. Maybe. Sometimes. Like once a month. Sometimes. And then we would just get a taco and no drink. Yeah, and we then wouldn't get the drink. <laughs> we would have... We had... <laughs> Play oh money. My God, man. like each one of us. Well, we still do yeah, have play yeah. money budgeted, and so sometimes one of us would buy the others bean burrito yeah. oh, for them. Oh my God, that was huge! Like I remember <laughs> one week just getting tears in my eyes because I didn't have to spend my play money on my bean burrito. It was you just. Did, did you? You didn't get bean burritos. I thought you. No, I got the um, the tacos. But I couldn't remember. I didn't say it because I couldn't remember what they're called. The tacos with the chicken and the the salsa. I don't know. Oh, like the chalupa things or something? No, 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 no. It was like the chicken soft taco with the pico de gallo or uh, something like yeah. that. That's what I would get. I wouldn't get the, the bean burrito. I'd get the other one. Wow. And you know, it is kind of weird to think back to like military and all that stuff. And then Washington up in Bremerton. That was a little better. It was a little better because... At least I was home. You were home. That was nice. And I had a garden. You had a garden. We had a little house that we were renting that was close to the base. Mm -hmm. I could walk to the base and back. I would come home for lunch sometimes. That was mm -hmm. kind of nice. And yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It is a trip, man. To think back the last twenty years. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, I get so excited because now I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> now we have Slurpee. This is amazing. I mean, it's just amazing. What we have is so amazing. And so I hope. I hope anyone who's watching this, you know, like you were saying earlier, we're not trying to flaunt anything. Mm -hmm. We're not, and we really, really do appreciate like so much of what we have. If know? I ever thought it was coming across as flaunting, then I just want to delete the video. Yeah, right. But I mean, we're we're happy, we're healthy, we're we're the three of us get along so well. We love our house. We've got good jobs. I mean, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. <sighs> and then and then I listen to some of these albums, and it's like. Fuck, man, there's some people just getting crushed out there. Crushed. And I think it's going to get worse right now. And I don't want to, I don't even want to talk about that. Just because why bring in, you know, what a lot of us are kind of aware of. But with the, everything that's happening with, with the economy and shit like that. Oh, fuck, man. Nope, we're not going to start that. Know. Let's not do that. Yeah, let's end it on a high note, huh? Let's be positive, happy. Mm -hmm. Any closing thoughts? I can wear my wedding ring again. Oh, yeah. Your allergies don't break out on that. Yeah. I used to be allergic. <laughs> so I didn't wear my wedding ring for years. Long time. Like 10 years. And she was always hanging out with this guy. It was strange. <laughs> I was just allergic to being married. Yeah. Aren't we all, though? <laughs> Cheers, man. 20 years. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice. How many more, you think? Three, four more at least? Yeah, maybe till December. <laughs> Why December? What happens in December? I don't know. Oh. No Christmas? We're not going to be Christmas married? <laughs> <laughs> Christmas married. Yeah. I kind of like being Christmas married. Uh, like Christmas. the Hallmark? No. Movies? You're all happy at Christmas time. It's, I do. it's just a lot of fun being around you at Christmas time. Like Christmas. Yeah. It helps, I'll, re it helps, I'll remember that. It helps me with my Grinchness because I kind of get a little grumpy around Christmas. I was, Christmas ain't really my holiday. I like Thanksgiving and I like New Year's. And you like Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do I have any closing thoughts? I don't know. I feel like I, if we keep going, we'll just start crying a bunch because we're just happy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You should watch us. Maybe we'll do this sometime. We'll set up the camera, mm -hmm. and we'll just, not the actual movie, but we'll have the camera on us, and we'll sit together and try and, try and watch the beginning of Up together. No. We no. cry like babies. <laughs> just like. I'm not doing it. Just. <laughs> full face melt. No, you're on your own. Oh, I can't. I can't ever get through that movie. The beginning. It's so hard. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> Uh, what else, was there anything else in the notes? Is that it? Did no, we, that's I, you hit all hit the all? questions that okay. I had. Um, see, the first one was get a better camera. Yeah, better camera. Yeah, and everything else. Yeah, we yeah. kind of talked about. Okay, well there you go. 
Thank you everybody who submitted questions. I apologize to anybody who didn't know about the questions. We kind of, I kind of snuck it out there in the community post there with just a text post. Um, again, thank you so much for all the the wonderful comments and the support and the Patreon and all that. I mean, it, it is just amazing, you guys. It really is amazing. And we appreciate it every day. I mean, every day it's like, God, this is crazy cool. And we brag about you guys. We do. Honestly, we, yes, th this is true. We do. I, I am. So there's so many times when you'll start telling people about my channel and like, I don't really like talking about it to other people just because I kind of get bored of talking about the channel. I'd rather do the channel, but I am so happy to talk about the it's comment. Okay. I don't, talk too much but i do start talking a bunch when it comes to the channel because i get so excited and you guys are so awesome yeah very positive very my positive. family is probably sick of hearing about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been very cool that uh, that there was a question what's been the most surprising or whatever that's been the most surprising mm -hmm. just how positive mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay you're just about spilling over. So we'll stop here. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. 20 years. Yeah. <laughs>